Today we'll be talking about the MSI Gaming Laptop GF65 Thin 10 SDR. Wow, that's a mouthful. In this one video, we'll answer all of your questions. And if there's a particular question that I missed, leave a comment below and we can chat about it. We will cover the unboxing, design, and overview, and we'll do a gaming test. I'll help you optimize some of your favorite games. I'll cover how to upgrade this laptop and how to install RAM and the SSD. And we'll explore its thermal profile. I want to hear from you guys. Are you planning on getting this specific model? Or are you considering a different laptop? Maybe an Acer or an Asus? Be sure to leave a comment below so we can chat about it. In this specific laptop, the MSI didn't want to spend too much time on its unboxing experience. That's totally fine. I can dig it. They wanted to pass on the savings to you in other ways. I can respect that. We have a quick start guide and an F3 hotkey recovery booklet, perhaps somewhat useful. Remove the last few cardboard bits and we discover the last part of the charger. Nothing special. Here we are purchasing a budget machine. Don't expect beautification like a GS65 Stealth. We also have a charger from 2003. Perhaps that's just a coincidence. There it is. Let's remove the plastic wrapping and pop this baby open. Mmm, fairly black with a red shield logo. A soft plush key protector. Let's remove that. And there we are. Oh, I noticed a little something odd. When you try to open it, it's a little stiff and hard to get your finger in there. Perhaps not a big deal, as this type of thing is common among mid-tier budget machines. Overall, the look is not bad. It's a bit more muted than other machines, but actually this is nice as it's not too flashy and in your face. You might not even be able to tell it's a gaming laptop if it weren't for those red keys. Once the hinge is moving, it's fairly fluid and it works. I would have liked to see a metal hinge. The machine is a fingerprint magnet. This is what it looked like shortly after using it for the first hour. Although it's nothing that a microfiber cloth can't fix. Actually, what we have here is brushed aluminum, and it looks and feels really, really good. It is also reflective in certain angles. Let's talk about that MSI logo. The red shield with the dragon looks pretty cool. The machine weighs about 4 pounds, and it has a very interesting rear. We'll examine it in greater detail during the upgrades portion of this video. Now, let's take a look at the I.O. We have an auxiliary headphone jack, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type C, an Ethernet, and a Kensington lock. There's three hot ventilation areas, one on the side and two on the back. The cold air is drawn from the rear and pushed out the side vents. These exhaust vents get fairly hot and also get fairly loud as well but it does keep the machine cooler than normal. On the left side, we have a power plug and a HDMI. PUBG ran at a solid 60 FPS with max graphical settings. No issues there. Man, the screen is so smooth. God, it's nice to play on this thing. I believe this is max graphics, so getting like 250 frames yeah 200 plus frames that's quite good all right auto snipe once more so the game's been running for a little while the lowest we're getting is probably about 80 frames 82 look at this look at how amazing this looks so much fun Reminds me of the thing that Quentin Tarantino always says in his movies. Fun rules. You want it. Why the need for so much gruesome graphic violence? Why not let us imagine Because it's a little so of it? much fun, Jan. Get really? it? Oh, really? Okay. Okay, so we have an area where we're getting 28 frames. So let's go in, go into settings. I think the thing that'll probably help the most is disabling the FXAA. Just disable that. Who needs that? and then the MSA, disable that. So this is a little bit weird because even though this warning is true, I think at some point they're gonna phase this out. Because how are you gonna have a game that's gonna be in the top 10 most played games 
but it requires a lot of RAM. About a little less than half of the gamers have like eight gigabytes of RAM. So that's a little surprising. So 16, I think is the, is like the bread and butter. It's like the standard now. That's kind of where you want to be at. I'm running through the whole map. Smooth, there's no hiccups. There used to be huge hiccups with eight gigabytes of RAM. Not feeling them now. Watermelon Motel. Oh, this is cool. I like this design. See, this is what I'm talking about in terms of emergent rust gameplay. Like, this is so freaking cool. Like, I've never seen anything like this before. Like, it literally makes me want to, like, interact with this, with this dude's um, <laughs> motel. Pretty freaking cool. Oh, God. <laughs> Okay, so we're approaching 39, 37, 34 of uh, frame rates. Now, this is where it might get a little tricky. Oh, 32. So I may start to reduce it a little bit. The graphics quality preset sliders actually do work. Um, I noticed also decreasing um, draw distance and shadow distance, but these things are really nice to have enabled. You want to be able to see far away, so draw distance enabled is important shader level plays a big role let's try um four preset okay so that definitely feels smoother increased what about 20 ish frames not too bad let's take apart our machine and upgrade the ram and ssd if you guys need upgrade recommendations links will be in the description to pop our machine open, we use an iFixit kit. These are great for taking apart any type of electronic gadget. Let me show you where all the screws are, and don't forget to screw under the factory seal. I almost broke one of my laptops because I never removed that screw once. One word of caution, it's very easy to break the plastic that holds this machine together. They put the factory seal sticker there most likely to discourage you from opening up this machine. Either take it apart carefully or ask someone you know to do it because even an expert can mess this up. Insert a knife or a thin object into the cracks of the machine's perimeter. Then slowly pry it open as you move along the perimeter. Even doing this very action can slightly deform the plastics, so be careful. The machine is snapped together at the seams, so you'll have to sort of pop it open by doing a prying motion. It's always so fun to look inside and see what's possible. I love seeing all the little transistors and microchips. Specifically, I like to examine the cooling and see how it works. The battery is pretty standard. It's about five to six hours of surfing and about three hours of video playback or two hours of gaming. The actual estimates are higher, but these numbers are what I got. And this is with proper battery settings. All right, let's upgrade the RAM. You really shouldn't need more than 16 gigabytes of RAM total. And if you start with eight gigabytes, getting another eight gigabyte stick will be perfect. You'll need one eight gigabyte, 266 megahertz DDR4 SODIMM stick. Let's take a look at its specifications. Be sure to insert the RAM correctly. I will show you how to take the RAM out and insert new RAM. So there are these little metal arms that hold the RAM into place. Just push the arms away from the RAM and the RAM will sometimes either shoot out or lift itself up. Either way, you'll need to remove the RAM diagonally from the motherboard. Take a look at these different angles to get a better idea of how this works. Be sure to take your time with this process as the motherboard pins could be damaged. And if you remove the RAM too quickly or insert it backwards, when inserting, be sure to line up with the notches. Next up, we want to upgrade our SSD. This machine comes with two SSD NVMe slots. This operation is similar to RAM, but no metal arms and there's a screw to deal with. Again, this process is fragile. Before we remove the RAM, we need to unscrew the black screws and then remove the SSD diagonally. Sometimes there are thermal pads that might hold the SSD into place. They are designed to cool the SSD. Notice that the pads are actually not allowing me to lift the SSD up for removal. You have to apply a little bit of upward pressure to release it and then remove diagonally. In terms of what SSD you might need, consider getting another NVMe SSD. Some may not be as fast for a huge discount in price. And these storage drives have seriously been dropping in price. If you want more storage, now's the time. 
I usually prefer an SSD. I usually prefer a Samsung SSD because they tend to be the most reliable with the best speeds possible. Although, unless you're a content creator or an engineer, you may not be able to notice the differences in brand or performance. The cooling system uses fans and heat pipes. The CPU, which is on the left, shares heat pipes with the GPU. At first glance, this doesn't seem like a good design, but actually it's a great way to improve performance if both devices don't have max load, because the CPU could feed heat into the GPU and vice versa. If you guys want some tips on how to get better battery life out of your machine, let me know in the comment section below. I do have some ideas. The speakers I wasn't really impressed with. I mean, they do work. They're pretty basic. They'll get you through the day, but they have no bass and they sound pretty flat. Looks like package temperature is around 80 Celsius. Goes up to about 86 a few times and then kind of roughly stays around 80, drops down to 77 as well. The um, CPU core frequency stays at around 4 gigahertz, which is pretty good. No issues there. Um, now we're going to check thermal throttling. So it doesn't look like there is any thermal throttling or power limit throttling, which is nice. Graphics temperature is also staying pretty low, around 65 Celsius. And the fans really aren't even ramping up that much. Let's see what, uh, let's see how loud the fans are. So when you're not doing anything, it's usually I think around 42 dBA. The machine gets the hottest at its base, near the hinge in the middle, by the perimeter. It can get hot enough to almost burn you at max load. And of course, keep your hands away from the exhaust vents, because they do get hot as well. The red accents around the keys are a nice touch. They're also slightly translucent and are backlit. The power button is actually carved out of a metal chassis, meaning it's not a standalone button that was added after the fact. They actually saved money on the button by integrating it into the metal casing. Gotta hand it to them for being industrious. I'm sure this passes on additional savings that a customer, even the logo that used to be carved out of a shiny metal MSI decal, is now just a plastic indent. Although having it be metal and shiny probably added to the distractions and was not a cost they wanted to endure, which makes good business sense. I would much rather have a lower cost, more affordable machine with a nice screen, good GPU and CPU than a shiny metal decal. For this price, we actually get a pretty affordable and powerful machine. In terms of screen, we have a standard dynamic range, a resolution of 1920 by 1080. The whites and blacks look real good on here, but the real star of the show is the 120Hz screen. During gaming, it's very smooth. MSI marketed this device as thin, and it's clear from the screen bezels that they attempted to make the device as thin as possible. Just like the power button and the MSI logo, the screen rubber gasket is non-existent. They just indented the perimeter of the screen to make it appear like it has a rubber gasket for closing, but it doesn't. However, this doesn't seem to impact the device negatively, yet. It would be nice to see a 4K screen option with higher 120Hz. I suspect a machine like this in the affordable sector will exist soon. I really like the trackpad surface. It's silky smooth glass. The trackpad size is passable, but I prefer it to be twice the size with good palm rejection. The scrolling is very fluid, but the click feels a little off, especially because you can't click at the top of the trackpad, only near the bottom two thirds of the trackpad. Because the top is stiff from the hinge, I would like to see some improvements in the future models to allow to get tactile feedback even from a top click. I would just like a consistent clicking experience. The keyboard is definitely a highlight of this device. The clicking has a very crisp responsive feel. Even when you type on the sides of the keys, they still depress uniformly. The lighting is also uniformly lit, each key having its own light source. Honestly, there's nothing I would change about this keyboard. 
if they release a 17 inch model, it should have a numpad. That would be nice. The front of the keys reminds me of Spider-Man or PS3 font. Lol, I'm not sure why they got this, but it seems to work and, the, and it matches the look and feel of the device. I never run into any typing issues with this keyboard. This right here is the laptop stand that I use for the laptop. This is called a Boyata, and essentially it props the uh, machine up and you get additional airflow, which is really, really nice. And uh, the air flows through here and it just increases the cooling capabilities of the device. When you're sitting on the, like a desk and you're working away, you don't need to hunch over as much because the machine is propped up. So you can actually line it up with your chair. So it lines up so when you sit down, you can actually type normally keeps the device planted so it's really not going anywhere so the hinge itself is actually really stiff you can go from like 11 inch all the way up to 17 inch it's quite stiff quite heavy so even like a beefy gaming laptop this would actually probably operate with pretty good okay so i've placed the laptop down and i wanted to show you kind of what this is made of so over here we have these rubberized little pads so when you place your device on there it's not going to damage it it's not going to hurt it and then these are like little grips to prevent your machine from sliding downward so it keeps it planted and over here you also have some cushioning as well so it's quite nice yeah it is really really rigid i would say the construction's pretty nice as well and um yeah i'm definitely gonna be using these for a very long time to come i think this would go really good with like a macbook air or a gaming machine um macbook air being because it like matches the uh metallic style the build quality of like the macbooks which is quite nice and then for like a gaming laptop obviously you're gonna need as much airflow as possible I like the little details that they added, like this little, these little ridges here on the joint. Makes it look quite nice and it's just so solid, so planted. Like this is honestly just not going anywhere. I did used to put one of my uh, Alienware gaming machines on here, the Area M51, and it was able to hold it up quite well. And that is like one of the heaviest laptops you can put this machine on. And you actually usually need two hands to do this. It can collapse all the way inward, prop up. So here I'm collapsing it a little bit more downward there you go so it's possible you may not need it to be very high so it might not need to be so raised i really like my machine to be as high as possible just because i have a chair that keeps everything properly lined up and even this desk itself can be adjusted to be higher or lower so i'm always looking to get better ergonomics with my setup this could also be good if you're trying to set up a terminal where you have to stand to use it either way you can customize it how you want it Hey guys, I want to give a special thanks to Boyata for sponsoring this video. Uh, these guys have been awesome. They hooked me up with the laptop stand and it has been a pleasure to use. I really, really like it. And then our other sponsor is Andable. These guys have been great. They gave us a, a hub to use and I've been using this thing for a while. Ever since I reviewed it, it has been just a pleasure to use. Very useful. I want to thank you guys for watching it has been awesome making this video for you guys if you have any questions whatsoever please leave a comment down below and i am looking for more subscribers so if you like this type of content i highly recommend you subscribe and i definitely want to hear from you guys thanks for watching and i hope to see you in the next one cheers